जय श्री कृष्णा वेलकम टू 18 वीक्स प्रोग्राम एंड टुडे इज द 18th सेशन सो आई एम ग्लैड दैट वी ऑल आर अटेंडिंग गोइंग थ्रू दिस बिकॉज वी लर्न क्वाइट अ फ्यू थिंग्स ड्यूरिंग दिस प्रोग्राम ऑल द वे फ्रॉम कर्म योग भक्ति योग ज्ञान योग एंड the topic of this program as you know is healthy happy and peaceful life so how can we live peacefully in this world and that's what the main coverage of these 18 programs was so pranam to guru ji for his blessings हरिहर जी महाराज एंड विथ हिज ब्लेसिंग्स वी आर ऑल टूगेदर हियर एंड दैट पाथ टू आनंदम एंड विथ हिज गाइडेंस हिज ब्लेसिंग्स टीचिंग ऑफ भगवत गीता वी आर शेयरिंग विथ ईच अदर ऑल द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स एंड बेस्ड ऑन द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इज प्रेजेंटेड आई एम सत्या खालरा यूर होस्ट and found out our path to ananda in today's program is instant freedom from stress misery pains and sufferings based on the teachings of bhagavad gita and this request came from one of the guru bhai ramesh ji and he asked for discuss mainly from the stress part but gita does not just talk about the stress part he just tell us ultimate purpose is to go beyond the miseries and pains and sufferings so i will be basic uh, discussing and the content of this subject is what is this stress how this stress affects us and what can we do about it and main subject has been taken on the equanimity on this part because gita talks about samatva yog uchchate and sthit pragasya so how can we develop it that equanimity which lord krishna is speaking about and then action and tips and meditation so we start with our prayers as arjuna did when he was in difficult situation he was confused stressed out depressed and he was really in vishad vishad means when one is very unhappy doesn't know what to do uh, and giving up what he supposed to be doing and then lord krishna step by step took him to prasad removed his doubts so we would like to have the same prayers for asking for the guidance from lord krishna with our humble request कर्पण्य दोषो कहत स्वभाव पश्चा धर्म सम्मूढ़ चेता यक्ष से आनी निश्चित ब्रूहि तन मे शिष्य से हम छादि मां तम प्रपन्यम शिष्य से हम छादि मां तम प्रपन्यम माई हार्ट इज ओवर पावर्ड बाय द वीकनेस ऑफ पिटी i have lost all my composure and my mind is confused about my duty my dharma i am requesting you to tell me what is definitely good for me not what i want but what is the best for me i am your disciple i surrender to you please instruct me and i consider myself as arjuna so this is not just the arjuna is speaking 
We are all Arjuna in this universe. Have many doubts, confusions, and asking for his guidance. And the solution comes from Gita. Gita shows us the way. And in, this, in my book, my question and God's answers, which is all the question and answers between Arjuna and Lord Krishna, every verse has been converted into questions because Gita answers Lord, uh, Arjuna's questions. So Lord Krishna answers the questions. And the very first question is, is it possible to live in today's world in peace, joy, and free from miseries of life, anxiety, stress, fear, and frustration? And answer is yes. The Bhagavad Gita, the song of God, blesses us with that possibility because Gita is a boat, vehicle, path that takes us from miseries and pains to ananda, a happy and peaceful life, and beyond, experience sat ananda. So what is stress? We're talking about stress here because Arjuna was stressed out. Stress is an uneasy state of mind. It is a mind and body reaction which responds to a situation. And in simply, we can say it is stress. I stretch more than I can handle anytime, whether it's a time pressure or whatever it is, but basically it is beyond our limitations at that time. An example is like a rubber band. When we stretch the rubber band too much, then it breaks. But gradually by gradually, it is learns to stretch more. So my stress is a poison and my own enemy. And this is on behalf of all of us. So what are the causes of stress? Unacceptable to situations or conditions like Arjuna, he could not bear the thought of fighting with his grandparents, his siblings, his near and dear ones. And also undesirable results. Like he was fearful that his near and dear ones will be killed by him and he will incur the sin. And of course, he will lose them. Also, Lord Krishna says, the too many desires, too many deadlines, unnatural work, rising food, our ego gets hurt, negative attitude comes out, criticism, anger, fear, worries, and doubts, all these things cause stress. However, different personalities feel different level of stress for same situation. In other words, you might be able to feel the same thing and you might not be affected with that, but I will be. For example, if I have a time pressure, I perform well. However, sometimes, my productivity and proper thinking is diminished or reduced. So everybody has a different, or not only that, sometimes we, we react to different situation differently. Sometimes it doesn't bother us, other times it bothers us. So what are the causes? Again, this is summarizes. And what are the symptoms of those? The worldly desires, again, it comes to, if they are not fulfilled, it gives a birth to anger. If they are fulfilled, it gives a birth to greed. And then we feel more attached. And then we become very egoistic that I got it. 
I'm better than others. And then I develop the fear of losing it too. So it doesn't stop right there. And if I don't get it, it comes to jealousy, stress. And when I have a stress, all these stress causes confusion, depression, vishad, and poor judgment. Like Arjuna confused. His body starts shivering. He couldn't stand up. He sat back on the back of the chair, his chariot. And he forgot that he was a Kshatriya. He's supposed to protect the society according to his dharma, according to his kartavya, according to his duty. And he says he's not going to fight. Means his judgment got really tarnished. He could not judge what is good and what is bad for him. So here is, I have presented this here. I got it from the internet. But what are the effects? Medical point of view. What happens to our body when there is a stress? The signal goes to our pituitary glands, adrenal glands. All the endocrine system gets disturbed and then it releases the cortisol. Here you can see the cortisol from adrenal glands. So it stress, it gives the message to the mind, to the pituitary gland, to the, it releases some hormones which goes to the adrenal glands and then it releases the cortisol. Cortisol go, has a very detrimental effect and it just affects our thyroid metabolic system gets disturbed. Also the organs below that, which is adrenal gland is just situated near our third chakra, which is uh, near to our belly button. So all the organs below that get affected, above they get affected, our blood pressure gets affected, the thyroid, the thymus glands affected, whole system gets disturbed. And that's why it is, I summarize it here. It says stress causes insomnia, depression, and it releases a toxins in the body. That's why you hear a lot of it to detoxicate your body. I, I say Gita is a detox, Gita detoxicates our, not just the body, our mind. And that's how it connects us to our supreme power soul. But when the toxins are released, loss of memory. Arjuna forgot that he was a Kshatriya. Our creativity, we all have the experience that we are stressful, then we cannot think properly. So I forgot because our mind is overtaken by these, all these hormones, undesirable chemicals and enzymes in the body. And then we have the negative attitude. And most of the diseases, a study shows, there are so many publications on that. In medical journals, you look at to Stanford, Columbia, any, every university nowadays, is involved with these studies. So 80% of the diseases are involved because or caused by stress, like high blood pressure, like as I showed the chemistry, how it works. And then the immune system goes down, then cancer, immune diseases, immune deficient diseases, all are the cause of stress. And then what happens? We become very unhappy. Our mind is disturbed. Our life is disturbed. And then what happens? Pains and miseries in life. And no peace. Ashanti. So what are my causes? The question comes. These are the generic things. But the question is, what are my causes? Of my problems. This is so important that we must know these reasons, awareness. Arjun got aware that he, is, he cannot fight, he's confused. So he asked Lord Krishna's help. Similarly, we must be aware of it. We must analyze it. What are my causes? Then we can do something about it. And then some action can we can take it. 
So many reasons. Our body might have some issues, some we, uh, they're due to some disease. There might be some stress, some hurt, some anger, somebody hurt us or some worries or some fear. Or sometimes we have too many deadlines, desires, activities, responsibilities. It's like we're running on a rat race, competition. Somebody else got it, I must get it. And then I must show off this thing, my name and fame or many things. Everybody has a different reason. This is a, I put it together because I have issues and I run into these problems. And then the relationship, financial problems. So ultimately it doesn't matter whatever the reasons are, results are the same, stress, stress, stress. And again, as I said, the different personalities or different timings or different situations, we feel the stress differently for the same situation. So how to manage our stress? How to develop the calmness? Which Gita says equanimity. Many people turn into alcohol and drugs and caffeine. And sometimes people say, let me take more coffee. Let me take tea. Let me take some medication. Like compose is so popular in India. We all know that this medicine, 80% of the market is depends on this particular medicine or other, other depression medicines. Now, you know, you look at it, even in the study shows in America, every fourth or fifth person has some kind of depression, whether they go to doctor or not, but they do face those situations or some kind of acidity in the system or all these, but Ramban follow Gita's teachings because Gita says, do regular spiritual practices. This will give you calmness and equanimity. And it is in the verse, uh, chapter three, verse 43. It says, Sastha abhyas, 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 atmanam, atmanam which is a spiritual practices. We should do the some abhyasa, some spiritual practices. So now the new word has been introduced, equanimity, which is Gita says is sit pragyasya, which means the sthir buddhi, sthirmati, because in Gita there are verses in chapter 12 and also in chapter three, there's so many places. Whole Gita is full. In fact, this is 28 times. This is thir, mati and is thir word has come in Bhagavad Gita. So be calm, be balanced. And equanimity, what does equanimity means? Equanimity means balanced state of mind mental calmness, composure, evenness of mind, or temper in a different situation. So it says here, yogasya kuru karmani, sangam takva dhananjaya, siddhya siddhya samay bhutva, samatva yoga uchyate. Here actually it defines also when we are in that state, means we are in yoga. That's what the yoga means. You know, if you look at this Gita's verse or any Gita's verse, most of the verses have a philosophy. Then also it gives you how to do, go beyond it. It gives you the problem, philosophy, I say it hypothesis, and then Siddhya Siddhya Khan Samebhuta means you go beyond your success and failures, evenness. So it gives the example that what does it mean? We should act without attachment. And then Samatva Yoga Uchyate comes. So Arjuna had a question. When Lord Krishna started explaining about equanimity, Sthit Pragasya, then Arjuna had the question and he asked these four questions to Lord Krishna. And he says, if someone is, what are the signs, hallmarks, of the person 
who is this pragasya whose mental status is stable how does he think how does he eat how does he sit how does he speak how does he walk how does he look like because he was so impressed arjuna was so impressed when lord krishna is explaining him about this calmness of the mind and sthit pragasya he says i really want to know how does that person look like how does that person behave and lord krishna says you really want to know that person is actually known as enlightened person because that person is free from desires prajahati yada kaman sarvan manogatan atmane atma tushta sthit pragasya dosh so he is fully satisfied he has no more needs and wants he does not get angry very easily he is anger free he is greed free he is doesn't he is not bothered by hey, what people think about him and he is not fearful he is free from the jealousy so he is basically fully satisfied and when he says free from fear he also says and he says it's a person is beyond the dukh and sukh so dukheshvanu dvignmana sarveshu vigat ispra vit rag bhay kroda sthit dhir muni uchchate that person is also known as muni because a person who has a steady wisdom who is calm whose mind is stable means he is not disturbed by sorrows dikveshnu vidmana means he is not disturbed by the dukhas and not disturbed or not even kabhi khushi kabhi gham so it means he is not wo nach raha hai aur kood raha hai aur ro raha hai not like that so sukheshu vigat is prasha and then he is beyond he is from free from rag dvesh krodha he is always is sit and that's where the definition of muni is also so he is fully satisfied and free from all miseries from the life so these are the requirements for healthy happy and peaceful life so here i just kind of put it that this is what the person when person is stressed this is what happened when person is in equinemus then what happens here he goes beyond and he develops all these qualities and this is basically the symbol is balanced his mental status is balanced and then these are the steps which i have mentioned many times seven steps from bhagavad gita and today is the final day so i will be summarizing it in a different way again but how to develop it again as previously yogascha kuru karmani sangam takva dhananjya siddhya siddhya samo bhutva samatt yog uchchate means when somebody is totally balanced here i put it there in the center part you can see mind and heart is balanced here mind is lower but the heart is so emotional crying for if somebody has hurt us crying because heart is the one is hurting but here look at the mind mind is up heart is heart does not have any sensitivity is so logical even it hurt doesn't acknowledge it but we have to be balanced and when we are balanced then it says prajahati yada kaman sarvan manogatan again the same thing it comes like atmnev atma tushta sthit pragasya dochate the person who is fully satisfied that's the person is called equinemus so here you can see it wants and needs not imbalanced when they are balanced when it is fully balanced fully balanced and you know you can see this light coming when person is stable then in gita it says that person sees the light and last week we talked about when person is equinemus 
then one gets the vision, divine vision. This is a symbol of light. So how to develop equanimity? So seven steps, as I mentioned before, that again, this is a vishad status. And by acknowledging that, yes, I have a vishad. And from there, making a commitment, like here, today is the proof. More speaking about the stress, free, calm, and equanimous personality. So make a commitment that I want to be stress-free from now on. I want to be calm. Calmness does not come without contentment. So the contentment and calm, and then we develop the equanimous. So basically, it's the reprogramming of our mind, the preconditioned mind. First, we have to be aware of it, that yes, I do have a stress. I do have issues. And then accept it, analyze it as we previously did that. And this is where the now the come the action. What are we going to do about it? So what Lord Krishna says, according to, we should work according to our ap appetite. This is what I'm just seeing, showing the summary, but I will further explain further. Help others, helping others is karma yoga without any expectations, seva. And then, control our senses. So these are the two things we will be talking about more because we have spoke about quite a bit about karma yoga, seva, bhakti yoga also, and gyan yoga. But today we are going to focus on these two subjects. And then of course, spiritual practices, yoga, asana, pranayama, meditation, prayers. And do your best and let go. So practice equanimity, sthit pragasya, sthit buddhi, sthirmati, that's how we will get our self-transformation and we will raise our conscious level. So these are the verses which Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that surrender all action to me with your mind, focused on me without selfishness and anticipation of any rewards. Neki karpuve me dan. That's what he's saying here without any attachment. Once we work, and he says, work without any mental stress. Do your duty. Stand up. He guides Arjuna, motivates him, stand up. Work without stress. Get out of this stress and perform your duty. And then he again says, focus on your own dharma. What it means is we should work according to our aptitude, according to our gunas, according to our sabhava. If somebody is more extroverted, more energetic, wants to do seva, then seva, karma yoga is for him. Somebody wants to sit and do the meditation, that's okay. Somebody just wants to do the bhajan, kirtan, and just whatever the point here is, whatever is our aptitude, we should work accordingly. As he says, it is far better to do one's own duty or natural work, though it may be inferior or superior, but unnatural work of others. Even death in the course of performing one's natural work is better than engaging in another's duty. What it means is when we perform our unnatural work and follow copycating another people because other people do it, so I should do it. If, my, if I'm a doctor, I want my son or daughter to be a doctor because I'm a doctor, but my son or daughter's swabhava is more on the IT area, more engineering, more social work, whatever it is. And if we push them to become a doctor, they will have so much stress in their life. They will not be happy even though they might be doing what they have forced to do. So whatever one's sabhava is, and when we do that, we are so relaxed. It's just like coming from our soul. Like somebody gives us a recipe and when we make it with heart, 
or when we make the food with heart, like a prasad, how taste food is tasty because we have no stress because we are making it for Gurdwara or Mandir or whatever. But when we do it sometime for the party, we have so much stress and the food taste is different. So whatever we do, we must do it without stress. That's what Lord Krishna is saying here. So how to control our senses and reprogram our mind? Lord Krishna says, goodness leads to godliness. So practice that goodness. And how we are going to practice goodness? With these five monkeys. So very first monkey. And this is on chapter 6, 17. It is all tapa. We have to do the tapa of our or sense organs. So he says, think good. Do not think evil. Man prasadam somatva monam atma vinigraha bhav shuddir itye tapo manasam uchita. In other words, keep your mind, your thoughts, have a good thoughts because the good thoughts will, you will speak good because you have a good thoughts. Thoughts lead to speech and speech leads to action. Whatever we think, we end up doing it. If I'm thinking about eating rasgulla, I will go to the kitchen and first thing I will go and eat my rasgulla, right? Because I'm thinking about it. And then if I keep thinking about it and keep eating rasgullas every day, it becomes my habit. And then what happens? My system might not like it. And I might develop some diseases. And then we say, Hamari kismat kharaab hai. Hamari body kharaab hai. Because we have developed that ourselves, our kismat, our destiny. And then bondage or liberation, whether I'm bonded to the disease or if I don't go through that habit, I'm liberated. I'm without that disease. And you can take many examples like that. But the bottom line message is do not make your mind a garbage collector. Then when that person, we see that person, then what happens? We don't even want to talk to that person. And we are growing on it like a small, like a slow, pray, slow cooker. Whatever we put, if we put a dal in it, you next day you, you get dal. If you put the kheer in it, you want to make a kheer, you get the kheer next day. So whatever you want to cook it, our mind is nothing but a small brewing cooker. It just keeps cooking it. So just change the direction of our thoughts, our destiny will change. And say, see good. Do not see evil. Logon ki buraiya ne dekhni hai. Don't be so judgmental about it. So Lord Krishna says, Yo maam pashyati sarvatra sarvam jamai pashyati tasyam aham na pashyami sach me na pashyati. Those who see me everywhere, see God everywhere and see everyone in me are not out of my sight. They are not hidden from me. I always see them everywhere and I am not out of their sight. It means and then he says again, an enlightened person. Here is another hallmark. When people practice this, then what happened? They start looking very humbly. Whether it's the Brahman, they do not differentiate Brahman or the more educated person or the person has a higher job or anything. And they even don't differentiate in the cow or elephant or dog or they see everyone equally. Why? Because they see the current of the body, the soul is flowing in every living being. So that's why they see God in them. And also do good. Do not do evil. Do your action, but do not be lazy. This is a very popular verse. We all know that. Karmanya vadika raste ma paleshu kadachan. Ma karma palhetu bhurma. The sango astu karmani means we should work, but we should not focus too much on the results of it. Otherwise, we get too much stress. If the student is studying and thinking more about the getting the A grade, then he develops so much stress because his focus is on getting 98 and 100% marks rather than studying and he's developing a lot of stress. At the same time, 
we should do our duty and does not mean that we should be lazy. And now speak good. Do not speak evil. Kisi ki burai ne karni hai. Bhagwan ne jeep di hai, muh diya hai. And here it says, Anudve karam vakyam satyam parhitam chahiya. Swadhyaya bhyasnam chahiya. Vaan mai tapuchyate. Rather than finding a fault in others and telling them what, how they are and all that. We should, Swadhyaya bhyasnam, we should turn toward ourselves and try to look for our own shortcoming and work on improving it. And it does not mean that we should not say anything. Like if our children do something wrong and it means we have to sit quietly or if somebody else does it in the job and we should quietly as a manager, no, we need to tell them. We have to tell them honestly without having a, some agenda behind it. But when we speak, we should speak very nicely to them very pleasantly. And that's where I put it here. Truth is spoken softly is like roses without thorns. We are like the roses, but no thorns. So this is the best use of our speech. So best use of our mind, best use of our speech, and best use of our ears. So listen good. Do not hear evil. And here it says, Focus your mind on me and you will overcome all difficulties and obstacles by my grace. This is what we all want. But if you do not listen, listen to this. If you do not listen to me due to your false ego, highness, meh, meh, mera, mera, you will be utterly destroyed. So we should make a best use of our all of our sense organs, which are mainly here. We should do a good Seeing good, hearing good, thinking good, speaking good, and eating good. And then, of course, doing good. And then daily spiritual practices, as we talked about it, we should take care of our body because body gets stressed out. And when we do the breathing exercises, like especially Kapal Bhati and all, and Alom Bilom and Bastrika, all that, they help us so much. They release the negative energy out of our system. And when we do the Om Mantra, then Om Mantra automatically gives us the grace of God. And then, of course, meditation and prayers. So healthy body, healthy mind. Then we are stress-free. Then we are worry-free. Then we feel happy and peaceful. And then practice, 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 practice. By gradually, shanai shanai upar me buddhya gratti grihita. This is such a beautiful verse. It gives so much patience. We sometimes get very upset and say, I've been doing this for so long and nothing is happening. Why should I do this spiritual practice? Or even sometimes we, we try to develop some good habit and we say, Nathagai isko kar karke. You know, we just get tired of uh, practicing it. But here, Lord Krishna says, Don't worry about it. One gradually attains peace and tranquility of mind by totally abandoning all selfish desires. Again, it comes to the desires part, contentment, completely controlling all the senses, is the summary of it, what we just discussed, and mind by intellect, keeping the mind fully engaged in the God's consciousness and thinking of nothing else. So patience, patience, patience. And then, 30 days planner, how to develop the equanimity, how to develop the stress-free, pain-free, misery-free life. Have a self-discipline calendar. Every morning have some rituals. What I call it ritual does not mean you just do the puja and arti. Have some rituals for the mind. Those are for the physical body, which gives us a peace. But getting up from the bed, you can, as I said, express your gratitude. Have your own mantra, whatever it fits in your personality. And then read one message per day, whatever you need to develop, any habit you want to develop, put it here and then the whole day, practice, practice, practice. This is a 30 days planner. And then, of course, yoga, meditation, pranayam, etc. And then contemplation and practice one message each day. 
whatever you need and then evaluate in the evening how did i do it did i but don't pound yourself for not meeting your expectations do meditation in the evening just evaluate it and then surrender this is comes the one sarvan sarv dharman paritajje mam ekam sharanam vrat aham tvam sarv papebhyo moksha shyami mahitya sar under i said apna sir bhagwan ke aage jhuka do apne sar ko niche kar do and then humility will develop automatically and then the god's grace comes automatically so benefit here are the benefits what do we get we get by doing it healthy body healthy mind stable mind stress free life and memory nashto moha smriti labdha tat prasadan maya yo sthito asmin gat sandeha karishe vachanam ta arjun ko tabhi samajh mein aaya tha he got his memory back we all get the memories back when we are calm in a simple thing if we cannot find something all of a sudden we are in the shower or doing something washing dishes and focusing on something or we are all of a sudden bell rings and say here is the thing we just find it because our memory comes back or some all of a sudden some of the memories start coming back which is if you go deeper and deeper you can actually get to the memories of regression of your previous life also it depends how deep you can go with meditation and then of course improve relationship prosperity abundance happy and peaceful life and of course union with supreme power and what is that the sanje kehte hain end mein yatra yogeshwara krishna yatra partho dhanurgra तत्र श्री विजय भूतिर ध्रुवा नीतिर मतित ममा जहां अर्जुन होंगे जहां कृष्ण भगवान जी होंगे वहां तो सक्सेस ही सक्सेस है मींस वहां स्ट्रेस नहीं है स्ट्रेस इज अ कॉज ऑफ ऑल द मिजरीज ऑल द डिजीजेस बट पीस स्ट्रेस फ्री लाइफ स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ माइंड is the secret for successful life and then we are calm confidential we are we are forgiving we are more fearless all these qualities come and we start recognizing it vasudeva sarvamiti just like arjuna and our body mind and soul is all connected and again i brought this slide back just to remind ourselves what are the benefits we are going to get by practicing equanimity stress free misery free pain free life and ultimately healthy happy and peaceful life and experiencing who i am i am no different than god i am satchit ananda and then of course we are filled with peace and our vibrations our aura goes everywhere from family to community to nation because we are peaceful and when we are peaceful inner peace will creates the global peace so this is just a summary you know we have the all the tools all the techniques what we just learned and then we become the total well being emotionally physically we develop self confidence there are unlimited benefits ah living a stress free life equanimity sthit pragasya samatta yog uchyate so in summary again see i just put this picture right there this it see in real world this is what's happening attachment ladai jhagde marna sab ek dusre ko niche dikhana you know look at all this but when we are on the path of this look at this all that peaceful life comes back because our focus is so this is where actually god is to me god is the messenger of equanimity every time we think about god our equanimity comes so again make a commitment today this is the 18th session last session of this session make a commitment that i'm going to lead happy and healthy life and have a positive attitude develop some 
hobbies which brings you gives you the stress free life it's not just the bhajan kirtan but some hobbies like painting or singing whatever it takes you out of your stress and then do your best and go but in here i just put a one slide just for our daily life what we need to do because th- this is all is spirituality but daily life when it comes to daily life it becomes little bit different so learn to handle the stress how to learn to and how to avoid unnecessary st- stress so these are the tips again speak the truth three s's you should remember S- speak the truth very softly and sleep well and then do your best and then surrender let go live the easy life have a some planner in life don't just running around here and there there should be some discipline in life and if there is a problem don't build too much on the problem let it go and sometimes we do many so many activities at times so it says don't do multitasking and whatever happens learn from it and let let go and then live in present moment and when i say live in present moment what it means is don't worry about what happened in the past and same thing is going to happen in the future god is with us whatever is going to happen whatever is meant to be we have no control on it so just pray to god be with me whatever the situation is in my life so take it easy be calm and equanimous so thank you very much for being a part of this 18 week sessions